The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. I move that the Haranui Kaikoura Earthquake Recovery Bill be now read a third time. Now, Mr Speaker, the Haranui Kaikoura Earthquake Recovery Bill is the last of three pieces of legislation created in response to the emergency which began with the earthquake on the 14th of November of this year. It's worth noting, sir, that that was one of the biggest earthquake events in the world for 2016. Uh, so that should indicate some of the necessity for this approach. I do want to, uh, firstly, before we go too much further into the content of the bill, uh, acknowledge the work of our officials uh, who have responded very, very well to the needs that they could see uh, on the horizon for a place, or the, the many places who are affected by that event. But I also want to thank the members of the Select Committee who engaged, I think, incredibly constructively to a point where it can be considered very much Parliament's response uh, to the needs of the Kaikoura Haranui District and right up into the Wellington District here as well. Mr Speaker, the bill allows um, for specified lists of legislation to be amended by order in council for earthquake affected areas, but only where it's necessary and desirable for recovery. It is a little open-ended, but as I said when I introduced the bill, it's just not possible in the early stages to know the full range of responses that might be necessary to move people's lives forward. So the bill facilitates recovery without needing to anticipate every power or statutory provision. This process is generally only used in ex exceptional circumstances, and there is, I think, a strong argument to suggest that this is a very definite exceptional circumstance. Mr Speaker, although it was short, the Select Committee process was well used by all political parties and many who had an interest in uh, where we might end up with uh, on a bill that has such broad powers. So I'm very grateful to those who supported the committee as I said before, but also to those who submitted to the committee and the changes that their submissions brought about. Those uh, changes have improved the bill. And I recognise that, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, when you're having a situation, uh, uh, sorry, a piece of legislation that allows the suspension, altering or changing of other pieces of legislation, there is a there is necessity to have some constraint within it. So firstly, the bill is limited in its geographic powers. And while there was initially an idea that we might be able to put other areas in through the select committee process, uh, there was the persuasive, persuasive argument offered, um, uh, particularly by the Honourable David Parker, that why would that be necessary when these events happen and Parliament comes together so quickly to do something for affected areas? And I accept that as a very reasonable uh, position. Mr Speaker, the Greater Wellington region has been significantly affected by these events, and it's only right uh, that there be some flexible mechanism to support effective recovery here in Wellington. It's not as evident here, because the roads are working, the sewer is working, the water is working. But the issue here is potentially in the safety of buildings that so many uh, Wellingtonians either live in or work in. Uh, and so anybody would want to be able to do something to ensure that they have the uh, ultimate comfort that comes from uh, knowing that the uh, law itself will do whatever is necessary to protect their interest. Uh, Mr Speaker, the bill is not a catch-all for all possible future natural events. As I said before in the discussions uh, with the Select Committee uh, and acknowledged by the many and, and highlighted by the Honourable David Parker, uh, if there is a future event, there might be a future response. Generic legislation, I think, would be a very dangerous thing in these circumstances. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, it's important um, uh, that, that this still doesn't mean orders in council uh, will be necessarily made for all the acts that are listed in the schedule. Uh, it is very broad and a lot have been put in there trying to anticipate circumstances uh, where it might not be possible for, where it might not be able to, uh, you know, predicting it might be impossible at the present time. So. Um, in any event, there will be, uh, there is a process now quite prescribed where a minister choosing to use this provision uh, will need to engage in uh, appropriate consultation uh, and will need to uh, have good and justifiable reasons tested against the purpose of the bill for advancing that legislation. In addition, there will be an independent review panel to look at those orders and to make a similar test and uh, to make some recommendations to the minister. 
That panel will be convened, convened by a, high court, a, a retired High Court judge, and it will include people with a range of relevant skills and experiences, including Māori traditional knowledge, protocol and culture, environmental protection and the nature of communities within the earthquake affected areas. One additional step added by the Select Committee stage is that the relevant Minister will now have to provide the review panel with a draft reason for seeking the order in Council alongside a draft order. It might seem that that's an obvious thing to do, but it perhaps was a little overlooked in the initial uh, drafting of the bill itself. It is now there. The relevant Minister will also need to seek and consider appropriate public comment, as I indicated before, on any proposal, unless there are exceptional circumstances uh, which make that uh, an unviable option. Draft orders will also be provided to the Regulations Review Committee or to the leaders of political parties during recess for comment, and the relevant ministers must have regard to comments received. The provisions of the bill are time-bound. The ability to make orders uh, and any orders made under this uh, bill will expire on the 1st of April 2018. There has been, though, uh, some changes to that, exceptions to that, and we've made um, uh, it possible for three specific pieces of primary legislation for Kaikoura, Haranui and Marlborough districts only uh, to be extended. This will accommodate expected delays in revaluation of properties and associated audits of those councils. So the expiry dates for orders relating to those matters will now be the 30th of June 2021. The Select Committee also discussed the importance of considering environmental concerns. In addition to the reference in the purpose statement, the role of the Resource Management Act environment environmental matters are specifically highlighted as requiring consideration as part of developing orders in council. I might add here, sir, that I don't anticipate this will be anywhere near the problem that some might think. Uh, so far, uh, as the South Road is being opened up between Kaikoura and uh, Christchurch, uh, there has been appropriate steps, or have been appropriate steps, to ensure that there are people on site, in fact, who have an understanding of uh, firstly, Tikanga Māori and how that might affect uh, the area, uh, but also people who are sensitive to what might happen to other people's livelihoods if uh, spoil, etc., is not dealt with in an appropriate way. So I don't have some of the fears that others uh, may have in that regard. It is certainly not a prohibition on people doing uh, what is necessary and provided for by way of the powers in this, this Act. I think then, sir, that the Bill does contain sufficient balances to make this necessary, uh, to make the necessary checks on it. The question of judicial review uh, did arise, and I'm sure that uh, that may come up again in this afternoon's uh, final uh, uh, um, area of, of discussion uh, on this bill, the third reading. Uh, but in the end, I think we've got a, a point where we can be comfortable that uh, there is lots to guard against the irresponsible use of an act uh, like this. Mr Speaker, the bill is an important step in helping us to support and promote recovery from the earthquake sequence uh, in the districts affected, and we need to ensure that people can get on with getting on with their job and getting their communities up and running again. It won't be an easy task for them. It won't be a short task for them, and this will not be the end of either uh, this government's or this parliament's concern to ensure those people are supported. Mr Speaker, I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. The